back. You may know Danielle Michaud as sports anchor for Sportsnet, but Danielle is also a survivor of cervical cancer. She joins us today to share her story and raise awareness about the importance of regular screenings. It's so good to see your face, Danielle. It's been a while since we could hang out in the makeup room here. Uh, I remember this story. I remember you telling us this, Danielle, when you were 31 years old, you were diagnosed. So tell me a little bit about that time. Yeah, Trace, it's great to see you too. Thank you for having me on. And yeah, it was a uh, never the phone call that you want to get, much less at 31 and not something I expected. I was healthy. I was athletic. I was feeling great. There was nothing to suggest something was maybe wrong. And just to really hit me in the gut, I was a week away from starting my dream gig at Sportsnet when I got that phone call and I was trying on wedding dresses, which mm. in the end feels a bit serendipitous because I was with my mom and my best friend when I had to sort of stomach that news. But it was a very scary time. It was uncertain. Um, you don't know what it means when you find out originally what the path forward is for you. And I think I really put my heart into okay what do i need to do next what are the steps to get through this and, and beat this because it's really your only option right that is brutal now you're here because you want to raise awareness on this and the fact that cervical cancer is almost entirely preventable so tell us about that yeah this this was the biggest gut punch of all because hpv infection uh is responsible almost entirely for cervical cancer so I missed the boat when I was in grade seven to have the vaccination that's provided in Ontario schooling. So that was never something I was even aware of. Um, and then to find out that what the cancer that I had could have been preventable and that it is preventable in Canada, if everyone can work together. I always bring up the example, Trace, that I'm sure you've been affected by cancer in your life. Almost everyone in that control room, everyone in my life has been affected in some way. So the fact that we could potentially eliminate a strain to me is something that needs to have a focus and that we all need to work together to achieve. Can you explain a little bit more about that connection between HPV and uh, cervical cancer, Danielle? Yeah, so HPV infection, incredibly common. The numbers are staggering. Three out of four sexually active Canadians will be infected with an HPV infection in their lifetime. And that's both men and women, which I think some people forget about. Women can be tested for HPV infection, men cannot. So they can be the carrier and never really know that they're spreading, spreading it around. So it's extremely important that people get their regular screening, that they talk to their doctor about how they can potentially avoid an HPV infection. Because like I said, it's almost entirely responsible for my form of cancer and could be eliminated. So it's, uh, it's extremely common. And for that amount of people in this country to potentially be infected by it, we need to shed some more light on it, I think, and talk about it more, right? Okay, so you mentioned uh, missing out on the vaccine when it became widely available. What should we be doing to help protect ourselves and our loved ones against HPV and certain HPV-related cancers? Trust the experts, trust the people that know, trust the science. So speak with your healthcare professional about what, what might be best for you and your family. Get regularly screened. This is the one that I can't push enough because I wouldn't have caught my cancer if I hadn't been doing that, and my, I'm so fortunate to have a family doctor who really invests a lot of time in her patients, and she knew something was up, and we dug in, and sure enough, we caught it early, and luckily, my outcome is one of nearly two years remission, and you know that, that's not always the case. So it's extremely important that you listen to your body, trust your gut, and get checked yearly. Well, congratulations on the two-year remission. And, you know, you did do the wedding and you did do the dream gig, which is where you are now. But I want to talk to you about this. You work in the public eye. You work in a male-dominated field. Did you have any reservations about going public with your cancer journey? I would say 100%. I really felt like this was something I needed to speak on because I do have a platform. I'm lucky to have one that I wanted to try to help erase the taboo or the stigma around talking about stuff of this nature. And I really felt a ton of support. I, man, in sports, team is everything. And I've had the most epic team from you guys at City Line, from Breakfast Television, City News, and then everybody at Sportsnet uh, from day one was there to back me. So I've never felt like 
what I've said is too much or that people don't want to listen, um, even when it's men. Uh, I found, if anything, they were more inquisitive. They had a lot of questions, especially about what this meant for my life going forward. How does this affect me? Can I have children? Is this something I have to worry about for the next five, 10 years? Do I get checked every month? Like, I, I was really impressed with my male colleagues, especially because I understand that for them, this could be uncomfortable. Okay, I love that. I love to hear that everyone just jumped in there and supported and had even more questions about what you were going through. We're so happy that you are now sharing your story everywhere. There are so many young girls and boys who need to hear about this um, and make sure they can try to protect themselves against HPV. Thank you so much, Danielle, for sharing. I'm wishing Thanks, you so Tracy. much luck in this phase of your life. Thanks, hon. Thank you. Appreciate it so much, Tracy.